Hello everyone, give me just a moment. I apologize for being a minute or so late again. This technology is a little new to me. All right, so how is everyone? Oh, no, can't see me yet. Sorry, give me just a moment. All right, guys, we are just about ready. How is everybody doing today? My name is Meteor Martin, and I am a scientist with High Touch High Tech. Today, we are going to be doing a very fun activity called the Germ Game. Now, before we get really far into it, I want to show you the materials and the um, supplies that we are going to need for today. And first, we've got some hand lotion, just regular hand cream. You could use any sort of lotion that you might have at your house. Soap would even work. Um, and I have glitter. Now, in addition to glitter, you could use sequins or maybe even sprinkles. Anything at your house that you can put on your hands and rub in a little bit later. Now, I do have a few extra um, supplies and materials, but I will tell you about those in a little bit. So while you guys are going and getting your things together, I'm going to do an intro um, experiment, kind of like a magic trick. So as you guys might know, a magic or science and magic are very, 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 very similar. They're kind of one and the same. Magic is science. So I have an ordinary balloon right here. See, I promise it's real. It's just a balloon. Now I'm going to blow it up. Now I'm going to tie it off. And here goes something that is very cool, but you have to also be very, very careful with it. It is an extremely long needle. Could you imagine? This looks like you could give a shot to an elephant, right? This is super long. Um, I also have a magic ingredient, which I will tell you a little bit later. And put a little bit on my extremely long needle. Rub it in. All right. And now I'm going to show you. You guys ready? Now I got to tell you, this is a great experiment, but at the same time, it is one that kind of scares me just a little bit. And the reason why is I am not the biggest fan of really loud noises. So if you've ever gone to a fireworks show for July 4th or New Year's, um, this is me in the bleachers. Every time you hear a big boom, I jump. It's not that I'm scared of the loud noise. I just, it's like an involuntary, involuntary response that I cannot stop. I will just jump. So it's not my favorite thing. So everybody watch out. I wonder what you think is going to happen because here we go. And look at there. What happened? Look at there. Can you guys see that at all? Oh, the needle is in the balloon. Don't know if you guys can see that at all through here. Oh, maybe like that. Now, there's a couple things as to the reason why um, that works. First is I had a magic ingredient, Vaseline that was coating my extremely long needle. Um, <clears throat> the Vaseline helped reduce the friction, made it glide into the balloon easier. It also kept the air from leaking out around the sides. So when the air doesn't leak out, you can't have the big boom of the balloon. Um, it also keeps air from flowing out afterwards and clogs up the hole. And the last part is that at the very bottom, we did it at the end of the balloon and not on the sides. So it's, the balloon is not stretched out as much. So you don't have as much pressure being put on it. If we were to push it through the side, we would get a big boom. And you would probably see me jump and hit my head on the ceiling of my house. And I doubt you want to see that. So in order to review from yesterday, for those of you that were here, what is a scientist? A scientist 
is anybody that is curious about the world and wants to learn how and why things work. Are you guys ever curious? Do you ever ask questions? Do you ask mom and dad questions all day? Do you ask your teachers when you're at school? Um, you, a scientist asks a lot of questions because they want to learn the answers to these questions. So while they're asking this question, they form a hypothesis. And who remembers what a hypothesis is? Good guesses, good guesses. And remember, that is a big word. Everybody say hypothesis. Hypothesis. So a hypothesis is just your best educated guess as to what you think is going to happen during your tests. And these tests in science are called what? Say it louder. Yell it at me. Come on, everybody. Experiments. Good job. Everybody say experiments. Nice. Super job. Now, your experiments are how you test your question in order to get the answer that you're looking for. And in order to, when you do experiments, you have to observe. Now, how can you observe? I'll give you a hint. One of the ways we discussed yesterday, that's right. You can look very closely at something. You can look super, super, super um, closely at something. You can also use your nose to smell. You can use your ears to hear or listen. You can use your fingers or skin to touch. And finally, you use your mouth to taste. Now, after science does all of a scientist does all of that, they have to record their information. They have to study it. They have to analyze their, all their information, and at the end, they form their conclusion. Now, don't forget, just like today and every other day that we are live, you guys feel free to um, send us your questions, and we will either answer them live or afterwards we will get back in touch and post them for you to see. So again, don't forget, send us your questions, anything that you might have, we will do our best to answer them. So, um, today's lesson plan is all about germs. And I know that is a very kind of touchy, scary subject at the moment with everything that is going on in our world today. You guys at home are hearing about coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus all the time okay so i know that that is something that you guys are hearing a lot so i want to give you guys some background information that may help explain why we're doing things the way that we are to try and stay safe and healthy so that we don't get sick so about a hundred years ago there was a scientist named alexander Fleming, and he had petri dishes that had bacteria spores cultures on them and in them and he had them all over his work lab and he was studying them he was learning about them and he observed and as he observed he noticed something really really strange he noticed that after a period of time mold started to grow now i know when you think of mold you think of the gross yucky green brown stuff that is growing on your bread or your bagels and you want to throw them away because you do not want to eat that but mold is also very very important it will kill bacteria and this bacteria was growing in the petri dishes which is basically a very small dish um, where bacteria can grow and live and and thrive and this mold began to eat and destroy and kill the bacteria so guess what? He ended up calling that penicillin. Now, some of you probably have heard that before. It is medic a medication that you can get at the doctor if you are sick, and you can use this medication in order to uh, you take, get a pill or you get some medication and you eat it at your house, and all of a sudden you feel better because you get that antibiotics into your system, and it begins to eat and destroy the um, bacteria that is in your system. Now, the next thing we are going to talk about is a virus. And I know that definitely is a word that you've heard a lot of recently, the coronavirus. So a virus acts a little bit different than bacteria. 
A virus doesn't necessarily grow because it's not a living organism. It is something that duplicates, it replicates, it creates more of itself. Um, it also has the ability to mutate or adapt and turn into something different. So for instance, um, when you were really young, go to the doctor and you get vaccinations. So basically those are shots. I know, I know, I know nobody likes getting shots, especially nobody ever wants to get a shot with a needle that is this big and this long, right? So, um, but you have to get these vaccinations in order to keep you safe. And what they do is when you get these shots or these vaccinations, a doctor is putting into your system, your blood, your body, a tiny, tiny bit of the virus. So when your body is introduced to this virus, it forms antibodies that can travel and go and hunt and destroy um, these these viruses that are inside your body um and it helps you to build an immunity it is our body's way of fighting off viruses so after you've been introduced to these viruses um if you are ever introduced to them again your body knows how to make the antibodies to attack the virus to attack the flu to go um get it so that you do not get very sick so when you're introduced to these um, vaccines and these viruses, such as um, um, chicken pox and the flu every year, if you get a flu shot or polio, if you are ever exposed to them, you will not get sick. Now, what makes everything so scary is this coronavirus is a brand new virus that has never been seen before. Up until a couple of months ago, nobody had ever had it before and then mutated and was able to make a human sit and very rapidly spread across the world. Now, you guys are being told by the government, by um, your teachers, by basically everybody that you need to have social distancing to keep yourself away from as many people as possible, which is one of the reasons why we are coming into your home every day doing this Facebook live presentation so that we can still interact with you guys and you guys can still have a really fun, hopefully energetic, interesting, awesome science class. So we are doing that in order to have a good time. Um, give me just a second here. Let me see this. I lost my place. My train of thought I was talking so fast. Okay. So it's spreading so fast and we're going to look at how germs can travel, right? How they can move, how they can spread ridiculously fast throughout the human world and throughout everything and why you're told not to touch people and go to school and everything's closed. So I have some helpers today. My two children are here. Of course, they're being homeschooled as well at the present time. I have Regan and Shaley. And the first thing I have is our hand lotion. And I'm going to take some hand lotion and I'm going to spray, put it onto my hands. And then I'm going to put some onto Regan. Sorry. And now don't be shy, guys. Y'all can do it along with us. Or later on, if you want to, you're going to rub it in your hands really, really well. Get it all slimy, greasy, all that lotion. Not only that, but we're all going to have some smooth hands when we're done with this later today, aren't we? All right. Now, we have, I have a very large bottle of glitter that I am going to start, and I'm only going to put some on my hands, only my hands to begin with, and I'm going to rub them in. My wife is probably not going to be very happy with me later because there's going to be glitter all over the floor. And first, I'm gonna wake up in the morning and, hi, Reagan, how are you? Can I high five? Yeah, you know what, give me a hug, give me yeah. a hug. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, now, give, give your sister a big high five or a hug. Oh, look at that, look at that. <laughs> now, we go eat. Are you guys want some breakfast? You guys hungry? Here's some Cheerios. You guys eating some Cheerios in the morning? Oh, wow, you guys are hungry, aren't you? 
And now they're eating. We have some drink. It's Coke. Oh, I'm sorry. I know we shouldn't be having soda, but that's their present for helping me. All right. So now they've been touching their plates. Oh, honey, do you want to put on your book bag and go to school? Although right now school's in the other room, so we're not, you don't have to go very far, thank goodness. And now I want you to take a look at something. Can you guys show your hands? This is how germs spread super easily. If you can see, oh, sorry, I've used silver glitter and the um, fork and the spoon are silver, so you probably can't see anything. But I'm gonna come up, oh, there's some germs on this plate. See if you guys can see that at all. There's some germs on the plate. Oh, it's all over Reagan's shirt, though. Oh, my goodness. Now, can you imagine if you were going to school and you had your book bag or you had a cup and you were playing outside? And look, it is all over her shirt, if you can see that. And she was playing with her friends and she touched her and her friends started to touch her. Look at the book bag. If somebody picked up the book bag and brought it to her, this is how easily things can spread and how germs can spread. So if you want to, you can also go touch your cabinets. You can go open your refrigerator, get a drink. You can do whatever and see how. Well, be careful because your mom is not going to be real happy. She has to go clean everything after we're done with it because there could be glitter for days all over the floor and all over your kitchen. But it will prove to you and show you guys how fast germs can spread. Um, I thank you for being with us today. That is our lesson on germs. Feel free to send us any comments. We will get back to you as soon as possible. I appreciate your time. Oh, yeah, sorry, thank you. I appreciate the help. Don't forget to go wash your hands because that also, see, she's a great helper. She's gonna be the next scientist in the family. Um, <coughs> see, and I also coughed into my sleeve. Washing your hands is a great way in order to stop the spread of germs. And you will see, if you go wash your hands right after this, the germs will come off, you will not have them on your hand anymore, and it will reduce the ability for the virus to spread. That is another reason why you're told to wash your hands, cough into your arm, don't stay around people, and, and be safe. We hope all you guys listen. Be safe, and we will see you tomorrow. If you have any questions, let us know. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you, guys. Oh, one last thing. Don't forget to subscribe to our emails and our Facebook page, and we will send you every morning what we're going to talk about, give you time to collect the materials um, and everything like that. Tomorrow we are talking about composting. Ooh, that sounds exciting, doesn't it? Everybody be good. Have fun. Take care. Thumbs up. Be safe. Make sure to wash your hands. Oh, good one. I like that. Let's see. Does anybody have any questions for me? Thank you. You two go wash your hands. This is like real world, right, guys? Your kids are around here all the time, too. We're still here. Not seeing anything yet? Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Have a great day. Oh, you should watch. Thanks. We have our first question. Thank you, uh, Miss Alyssa. You should probably wash your hands for about 20 seconds or um, 
while you're singing ABC. Now, you don't want to rush through it, but a good 20 seconds is about how long you should wash your hands. 